What's up, people? Mm, who told me to do this? Can you review Shredded Sports Science? Yes, I've got Shredded Sports Science right here. He seems to be doing something similar to what I'm doing, where he's like, I don't want to say calling out all these people, although he does seem to be calling out all these people. Um, yeah, so... Anyway, I, I don't know what to do here. Um, hmm. Hmm. I guess this guy's like a fitness person with a degree or something like that. I think he just rips these people a new one. Um, hmm. I guess, let's see, what's a popular video? Can't do any more test holiday shit. Um, hmm, training mask is terrible. I kind of want to watch this one because I used to use a training mask and I'm kind of curious as to why he's saying it's terrible. So the thing with the training mask, like, I'll show you guys what this is. I'm sure he'll go over it, but basically it's this mask that you put on your face. It's supposed to mimic your, uh, like, training at high altitude. It doesn't actually do that. What it does, though, is it strengthens your diaphragm muscles. So it makes it, cause it's much harder to breathe when you wear one. So like breathing while exercising becomes much more laborious, um, which there are benefits to increasing the strength of your diaphragm muscles for sure. Um, but it's just not training at elevation. So I'm not sure if that's what he'll say or if he'll say something else. Bottle cap challenge. Is this fucking, what's his face? Um, okay, if you guys have any other recommendations for videos ugh, or YouTubers, let me know. title of this video was a little strong. It sounded good. So relax if you use a training mask. You should not be made fun out of. I go hard in the thumbnails. But research does not support the use of an elevation or altitude mask for reciprocating the unique benefits of altitude training. And I'm going to briefly recap those as I have discussed them before. And I'm also in this video going to discuss the application of an elevation mask towards resistance training, which I think is actually an under-discussed topic. So if I do seem a little grumpy today, it's not because Tess Holiday called me a clown. Already have a mask. That's a win-win. Tess calling me a clown did not debunk obesity science in relation to disease and mortality. I'm a little grumpy because I was hoping to see Ben Askren fight for more than five seconds. Now, can we just get serious for a minute? I cannot confirm nor deny whether the elevation mask was inspired by the film not Fiction. And people use the Bane joke far too often with the elevation mask. That is not a joke. This is. And so altitude training in itself is a legit training protocol, a hypoxic environment, meaning where there is a deprivation of oxygen. And this environment stimulates the body to create more red blood cells and red blood cells transport oxygen around the body. Long story short and simplified, this can help with someone having more energy for physical activities. And this is ubiquitously used by athletes for sports performance, more specifically endurance activities, requiring more energy output over a longer period of time. And you can think of this environment as having thinner air or a decrease. Yeah, so basically like, pretty much like what I said, like it doesn't mimic the effects of elevation training. It just makes it harder to breathe, right? And, and technically um, it's harder to breathe at high elevation but for a different reason, because there's less oxygen in the air. When you breathe through the elevation training mask, I, I think, I, I, he'll probably explain this in like a much more scientific way, you're still getting the same amount of oxygen. It's just harder to get that oxygen because you're fucking like, it's like breathing through a straw. Oh, it's fucking hard as shit. Um, you know what I mean? I, totally coincidental that I have a straw right here. I wasn't like, that wasn't like a prop for the video or anything, although you know, I'm wondering, does, is he selling these in his, uh, is there like an affiliate link here? No, there's not. Okay. Um, I, I like, I like this. I like him. I think he's, uh, I, I guess at the end of the day, like you do have to have somebody who, who proves people wrong with science. Um, I guess our side needs that too, because there's a lot of fucking retarded ass science out there. Like I just read, I, I skimmed this article every, oops, every thing you know about obesity is wrong you guys should uh i mean i don't want to give them any more fucking traffic but like this this article is so ridiculous like you guys should look this up on your own it's, it's literally just like fat people cope the fucking entire thing um there's that also other fun facts i i wonder if my i wonder if this video is still up I 
I made a video. This is like way back in the day. Um, I might have made it private or deleted it. No, here it is. Okay, this is look at this old ass video that I made. This is like when I when I still made videos like and edited them and like put effort into them retarded stupid video like but i encourage you guys to watch it just because i think it's funny it's called how to training mask it's like really old on my channel anyway subtle plug there it's partial pressure of oxygen but the training mask does not reciprocate the benefits of altitude training because altitude training has to be a chronic process there are different ways that people train at altitude. For example, living at altitude and training at sea level. Li the live high, train low method. The reason they do this is to live at altitude chronically to get those benefits that I just talked about. But they train for their, their hour or two training sessions at sea level so they can perform more intensely within their sessions. Because when you do train at altitude, this can decrease your ability to actually perform a session. And there are other protocols where people will actually also live high and train high. However, the key point here is that putting on a training mask for one or two hours or however long your session is, is an acute short-term process. And that does not reciprocate the chronic and long-term effects of being at altitude. So we're going to play a game called Pure Fit. For the fitness addict subscribers who may be watching this, you can substitute the F in fit for the letters SH. And there is no real structure to this game apart from me putting completely nonsensical marketing claims in relation to an elevation mask on your screen with a caption. That's bullfit. Mm, looks like bullfit to me. No, ain't that some bullfit. Still bullfit. Nope, still bullfit. Grade A bullfit right there. And so thank you to Kevin from YouTube channel Pure Bullfit. Kevin is a former Marine and military veteran who is inserting common sense into fitness YouTube. He has a new channel. He's growing very fast. He's putting out some very good stuff. And so I have linked Kevin down below in the description box. I've also linked Pure Bullfit up here. Just remember, he's not as good looking as me. There is an application of the training mask to perhaps conditioning. Some people may want to use it as a different tool or an additional tool to create a different stress on your body, which can... Yeah, so, all right. So it says right here, the significance of this is still questionable as with anything else in fitness or health or nutrition buy one and try it okay when i would use the training mask i would i would like in in my mind i'm like a fucking min maxer to the to the max i guess um i was like oh i'll just put it on the high, hardest setting like that's how i'll do it right and i just like set it on the hardest setting you guys can watch that how to training mask video i kind of want to like watch it now I, I won't because i won't torture you but um uh, what was I going to say? Yeah, just try it. Like, I, I noticed a, like, pronounced difference. Like, I'll tell you what was kind of weird is that, like, my, my body got, like, wider. Um, I think because it's it's so hard to breathe that you have to, like, you have to, like, expand your chest so much more in order to breathe. And I remember the first couple times that I used it on the hardest setting, um, the, like, the muscles in my back that are, like, I guess where my lungs are, those were actually sore. Like, sore in a way and part of my back that I'd never felt soreness before I was like oh my god like my, my body is definitely changing after like when this heals for sure um, I, I recommend it I'm not sure if I still have it or if I have if I threw it away because um, I stopped using it and I was like I don't fucking it's just like too hard for me I was like this is too hard I'm never gonna use this again um, but yeah I, I don't know I, I think they're very good as it is a restrictive breathing tool. And so there are applications to restricting your breathing, working your breathing harder, your diaphragm, and creating a greater stress. And so there may be an application to conditioning, but again, it's vastly under research. But if you are someone that's performing conditioning sessions, perhaps for your sport, you're not absolutely off the wall to be doing that. So you don't need to be made fun of. Just be aware of what the training mask is and what it isn't. And again, some people may liken it to a psychological challenge, training under this increased stress. Now, when you have anything like altitude training, which does create a benefit towards, towards oxygen transport around the body, there will be shysters who put out juicy vitamins to replicate this effect. And they have done this successfully. If you want more information about these juicy vitamins, ask this man. But to be fair, although the training mask is under-researched and the pieces of research we have do not support many of the marketing claims made by the people selling it, my favorite Instagram playboy does use it. And he invented the bike in a sauna. <laughs> Sounds legit. And so in relation to resistance training, Andre et al. 2018 looked at an elevation mask in relation to the total repetitions performed during, during a leg press and squats. Now, what they found is that there was a decrease in total repetitions performed in these exercises when people were wearing these training masks. Also, these people had an increase in perceived exertion, which is an auto-regulated method of intensity. Very simply, that means how hard people think they were working during a set increased when they were using the mask. They also found that there was not a hypoxic environment created. And indeed, the researchers conclude that the elevation mask essentially decreased training volume, which is not a good thing if you are resistance training, for example, for muscle growth. And then we have a study in 2000 17, which actually showed that training volume was not affected, pesky research, and that's why we, we shouldn't just take one piece of research as golden and we have to compare research. It did, however, show that velocity decreased with, with the lifts performed. And so most certainly... Okay, so that's... This is, like, what what is that saying? That's like saying um, we, we gave these athletes something... We, we made these athletes 
uh, do something that they normally do, but we handicapped them in some way, and they performed worse. Obviously, they performed worse. You fucking handicapped them. Like, what do you expect? O- obviously, if you fucking breathe through a straw, you're going to be able to do less squats than if you're breathing normally, right? The, the idea of the training mask is not to make your workout better or, or um, it's not to help you lift more in your workout. It, it's to, like, train you to perform under, like, a more stressful environment so that when you're not in that stressful environment, you perform better, Right. Um, and that, you know, that matches up with my own experience also, which is that when I would train with the mask, like, you know, if I, if I trained without the mask, I could, you know, stay in the gym for a fucking hour, two hours, whatever. But if I was doing like a fucking legit workout and, you know, like whatever, I, I built up my endurance as a result, I think it was great. But, um, I would notice that like a 15 minute fucking workout felt like, you know, 45 minute workout. Um, so yeah, I mean... You know, it's like you watch Dragon Ball Z, you know, the fucking gravity chamber or whatever that Goku and Vegeta go to train in. Like, of course, you're not going to be tr- as able to train as hard in a fucking artificial gravity chamber, right? But then when you go back to normal gravity, you train harder. So I don't know why I didn't mention that. Like, obviously, you're going to do less squats when you have a fucking training mask on. Um, duh. Like, I, I don't know. I, maybe he'll say that now. More research is needed in relation to the training mask with conditioning and also resistance training. But the research we have is not good for the elevation mask. And so to break this down very simply for you, whenever you have anything like this, really if it's a training mask or something else which is being put out there, such as Thanos' twin brother, we have to be clear about our specificity, the purpose for what we are doing, the specific goals we have for our training. So with the training mask, if you are using the training mask during weight lifting for muscle growth or strength, stop. If you're using the training mask because you think it reciprocates altitude training and the benefits with red blood cells, oxygen transport, stop. If you are using the training mask during conditioning sessions for your sport, perhaps as some sort of extra stress uh, with your breathing, that is more of a valid application, but still very heavily under-researched. So this is James Linker, Straight Sports Science. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon. Uh, okay, like, he knows his stuff, I guess. But, like, again, all of these questions could be easily answered by buying a training mask and trying it a few times. Um, I, I guess you could make the argument that, like, if you do not want to suffer a momentary hit to your performance for overall faster and greater improvement, then you should not use a training mask. But if you, if you're, it's like the fucking gravity chamber. Like, is this is this so hard for people to understand? I, I find it hard to believe that it's hard for this guy to understand. He seems intelligent. Um, you know, this is like saying, okay, let's say you have a progression of like increasingly difficult calisthenics exercises and you move to the next most difficult one and you can barely do it does that mean you shouldn't do it because you won't get as strong like do you understand like no you you should do it and it'll make everything else stronger and you'll get better right maybe you should do both as you transition right does this mean you should like 100 percent switch to using the training mask and never do a workout where you don't use it also no um, I think if you if you strategically use it or even randomly use it, honestly, if you just like throw it in, like you flip a coin, you're like, okay, am I going to do today's workout with the training mask? I, I think I think there's value in that as well. Um, does it mimic high altitude training? No, but what I think we're really after here by using the mask is an increase in performance, like period, right? And and I I believe as a result of using it that it does increase your performance because it makes your workouts harder. And when you do the same workout with a handicap, when you do that workout again without the handicap, it's gonna be easier. You're gonna perform better. It's, it doesn't take, you don't need fucking studies to like back that up. I, I don't know. Anyway, who told me to do this? Randy Lee. Thank you, Randy Lee. If you guys have any other recommendations for video, videos or YouTubers you want me to look at, let me know. Also, how to training mask by Yala Poppy. Don't judge me on this. It was three years ago, et cetera, et cetera. Peace.